a functioning university that keeps our best and brightest kids here, that is an incubator of innovation and entrepreneurship. We should be leading in climate studies. We should be leading in a host of things. And in our resource development, we want to show the world that we know how to do it and do it right. We need manpower to, to protect us. So thank you. You have other questions. Just a quick follow-up to clarify where your caucus stands. So in, in this case, then, would it be better to do nothing, so to speak, this year that significantly addresses the budget shortfall rather than a permanent fund earnings solution which would impact the dividend? Nothing is complete. Doing nothing is completely unacceptable. Doing nothing, the experts all agree. It's not just us. Doing nothing deepens and extends the recession. That's unacceptable. It's, it's just, we can't do nothing. So the governor came out with a plan three years ago to, that we liked some elements of it, some elements not. But we think targeted cuts is the way to start. Fixing our share of a return on, the oil, on our resources that we own and make sure that we are treated right. Then we want to make sure that we have a broad-based tax so that we get the 20 percent that don't live here and it's spread across the state and only then do we support using permanent fund earnings and reducing or impacting the dividend potentially but we got to protect it while we do that and, and to just add you know to your to your point you know the senate is in the majority they have to act the house has a majority that will be acting so I, I just, I suspect that that question won't be on the table, that we will get to a place of resolution. We're presenting a plan here that we think that the Senate, it's some modification of it, should be able to adopt. If they don't adopt it, I suspect that they'll be in, in very heated and, and, and protracted discussions with the House about what the plan needs to look like. But I, I am certain that a majority of legislators this year are not going to abandon our citizens to an uncertain future. If, if uh, what you're certain will not, uh, Andrew Kitchenman, Alaska Public Radio Network. Um, if uh, what you're saying is you're certain is does not happen, uh, does happen, um, are, are you concerned that um, you run the risk of cuts to what you would see as needed services in the long run if the state um, doesn't have any new source of revenue? just impossible <laughs> you know it has to happen it has to happen it, it's just it's just basic math right we e even the most conservative commentators out there have talked about cutting the budget to maybe four billion dollars well we're taking in around 1.5 billion dollars 1.3 billion dollars so that's roughly our education budget so you could theoretically, with what we have right now, fund education, and you would fund nothing else. You would let every prisoner free. You would not plow any of your roads. You would not have uh, fishing game being able to monitor and do the incredible job that they do. Every state job would be laid off. It, it would. I mean, if if they don't take action, we're getting to the point where we're running out of savings. There is required action, and. All of us are going to have to budge, right? All of us will have to budge. If, if I had my way, we would uh, not even be having any discussion at all about using the earnings reserve. But uh, if we can protect it, then uh, I'm open to having that discussion. But that means that people who are adamantly opposed to doing nothing on oil taxes need to budge and com come a little bit in our direction. So it's a compromise. And I think what you're seeing from us is we're willing to compromise. We're willing to be a part of that solution. We're putting out ideas. We don't claim to have a monopoly on good ideas, but we're willing to be part of the solution and help make this work because uh, our, our, our state's uh, economic future is at stake. And, and Andrew, if you're spending down, if you, if you, if you end up you know, spending down what's left of our earnings, and you know we only have a little bit of time left. We have at most, I think that the calculation was a year and a half, essentially 18 at months, at best 18 months. You know, let's, let's assume a higher price of oil. Here, here's a fact about oil. You know, the, the, the price point for fracking in this country is 55 to $60 a barrel. Anyone who thinks that oil is going to be popping up to above $70 a barrel for any length of time, anytime soon, 
is, is living in a fantasy world because as soon as the price of oil gets to a certain thing, a certain value between 55 and 60, all of that production begins again in the lower 48 and it drops, thus increases the supply and drops the oil. It's basic economics. So given that, yeah, we will suffer if we do not, in fact, if we do not, in fact, have a plan. And the people who will be responsible for that aren't sitting up here at this table. They're going to be the ones who are, frankly, in charge of this majority, and, and they're going to have to live with that decision. And I think, you know, that is a route we could go down. But for every dime that we use up in earnings, we are not making revenue off that earning, which we are doing now. So there's a loss of the revenue we're not taking in, and we're, for, we're actually mortgaging our future. It's like a reverse mortgage, but there's no real good payout at the end. And as we mortgage our future, we're stealing from future generations who are owners and should have a share in the wealth of this state. It's unconscionable for us to live off of it ourselves, refuse to participate, and let the grandchildren and their grandchildren have nothing. Becky Borth, AP again. One quick question on a different topic. Uh, Senator Wilikowski, the governor, introduced uh, his Real ID bill, which he, he indicated he would during the interim. Um, it would allow for compliant and non-compliant IDs. Um, given your, your thoughts in the past on Real ID, can you talk about mm -hmm. um, your thoughts now on, on that program and if the governor's bill addresses your concerns? Well, we, we passed legislation to uh, Alaska was really at the forefront on the issue of real ID. Uh, I had, I think it was 2008 or 2009 we passed it. There was tremendous concern from Alaskans, constituents, uh, about real ID. I, I was amazed going door to door this last year in my district how many people were still concerned about real ID and, and who actually thanked me from, for fighting against uh, what was happening. I, I think the biggest frustration for me on real ID is is that it? Here, here we go. We got the the federal government who uh, is is are putting their thumb on the states, and really forcing them, putting them in a situation where they have to do something on, on the issue. You know, our hope was that we could we could spur a, a grass fire across the across the state and across the country of states and and people who are willing to stand up to the federal government. And unfortunately, we just have the the federal government just pushing down on people and pushing down on people to the point where they're going, going to say, look, if, if you're not real ID compliant, if you don't turn your DMV offices into de facto immigration offices, we're not going to let your people fly on airplanes. We're not going to let your people uh, go on to military bases or in federal offices. I, I think that's outrageous. I wish our federal delegation uh, could somehow get involved and stop this from happening. But I haven't seen any movement at the federal level on this, and, and unfortunately, I don't anticipate it. So we're, it really puts us in a, in a tough situation where, uh, you know, do we, uh, because I know there are a lot of people in Alaska who don't want to go out and don't have a passport, and they would be prohibited from flying if we don't. So it's a, it's a tough situation. I, I haven't, uh, I look forward to hearing the testimony on it and, uh, and, and seeing what we can do. Uh, I'm, I'm very disappointed that we're in this situation, though, with, with the federal government. And I think there's another aspect to it that I remember from years ago when it was first introduced, even before Senator Wilkowski had his um, bill passed, and that is that the DMVs would be required to keep um, identifying documentation, birth certificates and things on file, but they'd be accessible to DMV workers all over the country. They'd be like a, a, a universal or a national um, data access. And the possibility of increases in the number of identity theft, um, I think, is really dramatic. It's impossible to protect that much data that's accessible by thousands of clerical workers in every state. You know, it's a big concern. And, and another point that needs to be made on this, this is going to cost probably millions of dollars to implement. We, we have saved millions of dollars over the years we have not had this. Um, but it will cost us millions of dollars, I expect, to implement this, which we don't have. Anything else? Okay. Thank you very much. Have a good weekend. Week. <laughs>